It's DSP's most disappointing games of 2015. Number 6, a triple tie between Evolve, Rainbow Six Siege, and Splatoon. So when I get started with this one, let me explain right up front why I feel that all these games are the first ever triple tie for games I was disappointed with in a year. They all suffer from exactly the same problem. Not enough content at launch to warrant a full game's price tag. Now, admittedly, each one of these games also has another flaw that kind of leads it to be on this countdown. Evolve only having a small handful of monsters at launch and then nickel and diming the customer into buying expensive DLC packs for newer monsters shortly after the release of the game was a blatant way to rip off the consumer and try to get more money right away. Rainbow Six Siege, from what I played for it on the Xbox One, is barely even a functional game. It crashes constantly. It has matchmaking issues. It has bugs that don't allow your character to move at certain times. And then when the game finally does work, it's nothing really special. It feels like you're playing a Rainbow Six game only within a confined area, which is actually exactly what it is. The whole premise of the game doesn't warrant a full game price tag, and the bottom line is, much like Evolve, after you play it for a few hours, you're going to be bored with it. Splatoon, out of all the games at this number 6 in the countdown, is a little bit different, only because I feel this game was not worth a full game's price tag at launch in May of 2015, but after a series of free DLCs were released for the game over the course of the summer, it definitely is a more complete package now. That fixed issues like imbalance of in-game weaponry, or the fact that there weren't enough maps to play. I still have a huge gripe with the fact that during a certain time period of hours during the day, you can only play play certain game modes and maps. I think that's absolutely ludicrous, and if you're buying a multiplayer-only game, you should be able to play the game mode you want and the map you want when you want to, and not be dictated to by the game. The reason that Nintendo employed this strategy, because they knew the game didn't have a lot of maps in game mode, so by limiting what you can play to certain times of the day, they know it actually makes you play more, because you're like, okay, I really played this game mode a lot, but I want to play this other one, so I'll just stick around until the next mode's available, because I'm bored of this one. And it really makes the game feel like there's a lot more to it when there's really not. So, all three of these games follow a trend. This new trend of online-only, multiplayer-focused games that you're still going to spend a full $60 on when there really is no main kind of single-player campaign to speak of. Splatoon does have a campaign, but it's very short. The other two games here do not. And the question is this. We used to pay our full-fledged dollar, a full game price tag, for a game that had both a, a story and an engrossing single-player campaign and multiplayer. Now it seems that these game developers think they can get away with just completely cutting out half of the game. Are we going to put up with that? Are we going to support games like Evolve that want you to spend 60 bucks for a very limited amount of content and hopefully you get hooked on the addictiveness of it and then keep punk plunking money into it over and over and over to get a little monster here, a new class there? It's ridiculous. It's disrespectful to the consumer. It shows us that basically these game developers don't care about the money that we're giving them when they're just looking for an ongoing revenue stream. If we continue to buy games like this, this problem isn't going to go away. So if you strongly disagree with this practice, I recommend you don't buy these games in the future because the bottom line is if these games flopped at launch, they wouldn't continue to make this kind of stuff. So Evolve, Rainbow Six Siege, and Splatoon, all very disappointing for me in the year of 2015, and I hope this is not a trend that continues in the long term. Up next, a game with a very timely tie-in and a long-standing franchise releases to expectations of great things and kind of just fizzles. Check it out. <laughs> 